Why, yes, I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Geek Talk, a journey into the things we love. I'm your host, Shane Stacks. Thanks so much for joining. If you're listening about 1 p.m. Central on Saturday, March 10th, and you're listening live via 96.5 FM, The Answer in the Little Rock uh, Central Arkansas metro area, or you're listening live online via the stream at 96.5 FM, The Answer.com. So glad to have you. If you're listening delayed by podcast or on Krypton Radio, also, so very, very, very glad to have you. Uh, this is a live radio show that is also a podcast because uh, I love both formats. If you're listening live, you can call in at 501-823-0965. That's 501-823-0965. Or you can tweet me at Shane Plays. Uh, and that's S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S. I do try to monitor that. Uh, every now and then I miss one during the live show, but I do my best to uh, to get that stuff worked into the live show. And I, I appreciate all my listeners and people that give feedback and that kind of stuff. So anyway, you can tweet it S H A N E P L A Y S or call in at 501-823-0965. Uh, speaking of shame plays, uh, if you're listening by podcast or on Krypton radio, the show notes for today's show will be up at shameplays.com, the blog and website and et cetera, that, that supports all of the various Shane plays Efforts. I uh, got a cool show today. As as people know, uh, listeners, longtime listeners of the show, I try to carry cover various topics uh, within the geek world, um, including you know comic books, role playing games, video games, movies, what have you. If it's geek, I've got a cryptocurrency show coming up with uh, going to schedule that with Chuck Huber uh, from Star Trek Continues, who's also a voice actor that does uh, Dragon Ball V, G, uh, Dragon Ball Z voices, including Android 17. But today's show, uh, I love whenever possible to get uh, quote unquote indie game developers on, because I think that's a fascinating world uh, out there that's bringing all kinds of cool stuff. It's kind of the wild, wild west, but it's also bringing neat games to us that we wouldn't get otherwise. And today, my guest guest is uh, Matthew Weymouth, who goes by Matt. Uh, so that's Matt Weymouth, um, who is currently working on a uh, indie MMORPG called Tenacity Online. Matt, you there, buddy? Absolutely. There you are. Hey, let's let's take his volume up a little bit there, uh, Zach. All right. So, hey, hey, Matt, say the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy game developer. The quick brown fox jumped over his lazy game developer. Okay. It's, is it on his end? Okay, yeah, can you take your volume up a little bit there, Matt? You sounded good when we tested before, uh, but it's a, it's a little low now. Not sure what's going on there. Uh, while you're working on that, I'm going to give out some more show notes. Um, okay. So the uh, last week's show is archived on the blog. It's Mars or Bust, and that was Elon Musk and SpaceX with David Beatty of Mega Wars. Uh, and David Beatty is actually a, a mutual acquaintance of uh, Matt and I. Uh, and we had a lot of fun talking about the Falcon Heavy uh, and what it means for uh, space exploration from SpaceX. Uh, the podcast always goes out a few days after the live show. Uh, that's on um, the uh, on the blog at shameplays.com, iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, and more. And then uh, last but never, ever, ever least, uh, Shane Plays is carried on Krypton Radio. Krypton Radio is sci-fi. For your Wi-Fi, CryptonRadio.com. All right, so let's check back in with Matt. Matt, you still with us? Hey, how's it going? Matt, that's a lot better. All right, now All now, right. Ta- now take him down just a smidge there, Mr. Zach. All right, we t- this is live radio, baby. We tested this yeah. right before the show, so that's that's live radio. I love the hanging over the cliff energy of it. So um, anyway, so Matt- Pretty before- similar to the indie world. The- exactly, right? Yeah, let's take him up just a little bit more there, Zach. Um but we'll find that perfect balance of Matt Weymouth. Uh, so, yeah, that sounds really good. So, okay, uh, I've got some more show notes that I'm going to go through. But before I do that, I want I want to, you know, kind of uh, give people a little bit of idea of what we're going to talk about with Matt today. Matt's an indie game dev. Uh, you, you've you got more than one game under your belt. Uh, there's a really fascinating article out there in Gadget did on you uh, about a year and a half ago. We'll touch on today called the... And this isn't a this isn't a literal title. It's a figurative title. The only video game developer in Mississippi, um, which yes, is yes. real. It's a fantastic article. Talks about some stuff you're trying to do to bring people together for indie game development. And uh, 
you're currently tell us just give us the elevator pitch if you will on what tenacity online is and then we'll expand on it later in the show uh, Tenacity Online is an uh, independently published MMO by me and my you know, fellow devs. Uh, it, it's essentially, I'm shooting for the MMO for the role player. Okay. So I'm designing it more to be in, this, in the realm of a tabletop RPG than, the, than your typical MMO. Okay. Now, I, one, we, we hang out in a chat room on Facebook. Me, you, mm-hmm. David Beatty, Matthew Barton. Um, Nathaniel Tolbert, Adam Dayton from uh, Fragments of Silicon Podcast, some other folks who may or may not want to be Jesse from Twin, uh, what is it, Twin Galaxies? Right. Anyway, there may be some people that don't, you know, we have some well-known devs that hang out in there, and they may or may not want their name thrown out. Uh, They can never message me if they want me to mention that. But the point is, you you mentioned recently in that that uh, you, you envision where every character in the game is a person. Right. Yes. Is it, did I understand exactly. that correctly? Uh, okay. So instead of walking up to a generic NPC named Blacksmith 2, um, it will be a real person who has handcrafted these items and set up shop to sell them to you. Nice. So so that's kind of it's it's the MMO for the role player. We'll get into that more here in a little bit. Like, you know, what when do you think we might actually see a playable version? And, you know, what are you building yeah. it on? And, and what are the challenges and all that good stuff? And I've also got some uh, indie game dev news or game dev news in general. And then, um, you know, we'll talk about if we have a chance, just what's it, what's it like to be an indie game dev? You know, what, what illusions have you had, you know, shattered <laughs> since you got into it? Lots or, of them. Yeah. And what's cool, <laughs> what's cool stuff that's happened you didn't expect, you know, cause it's not always it, the, the glass can be both half empty and half full. Right. So, um, right. all right. Anyway, I got a couple more show notes to get to here and then we'll, we'll keep moving with the show. First of all, folks, remember Shane Play sponsor, Arkansas RPG Con 2018 badge sales are now open. Vendor and sponsorship options are also open. Go to ARRPGCon.com for more info and make sure to follow Arkansas RPG Con on Facebook. It's okay. Folks, if you're into tabletop role playing, this is uh, the first uh, inaugural event of this con was last year. It was great. This year looks to be good. It's a great mix of what's known as OSR gaming, which is old style gaming or, or just straight up older games plus the newer stuff. So it's it's a great mix. Uh, we had Mythord Loop Crate folks there last year it was it was a great time uh so come on out and it's small enough that you can rub elbows with whoever you want to rub elbows with all right uh and then also we've got the heroes and angels comic-con april 28th 10 to 4 p.m at the greenbrier event center heroes and angels comic-con you don't want to miss this one tons of activities for the kids and this is a psa this is a public service announcement it falls under that uh, umbrella but tons of activities for the kids special guests and free admission Donations will be accepted and all proceeds go to Heroes and Angels, a nonprofit organization that provides assistance to families affected by childhood cancer and to military families in need. So great, uh, great organization, great cause. They got caught in uh, a couple of months ago. I did the the show on the uh, cosplay con fraudster, um, Malcolm Fledge, who uh, fleeced a lot of people and ran with the money, including, you know, money that heroes and angels was supposed to get to help families with kids with cancer. Come on. So anyway, it's a great, great, um, great cause. It's going to be April 28th, 10 to 4 PM at the green buyer, green Briar event center. So, um, anyway, you know, I've checked that out. Uh, let, you know, it's a great cause. So, uh, again, today we're going to be talking with Matt Weymouth. What, what's the, what, what's the name of the organization or company that, that you go under there, Matt? Um, I didn't really have one before, yeah. as you know, it wasn't necessary till I had something to actually sell. Right. But I have recently started filing the paperwork and whatnot to open my own little studio called Brain Sandwich Games. Brain Sandwich Games. I like it. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I like it very much. So, uh, okay. So Matt Weymouth of the newly formed Brain Sandwich Games, who will be bringing you tenacity online, uh, that is a is the MMO for role players, which I like the idea of that. I so said we'll get more into this, you know, later in the show after the news segment. But I, I actually have a blog post out there that says MMOs don't really scratch my itch, man. And and the point I make is I never feel special ever. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I feel like uh, I'm not special at all. And if I jump in, if friends tell me to come play, all I all I do is get spent all my time getting drug around to level and, you know, 
oh, come here level. Okay, I'm here level. Oh, now this other guy's logged on. And even though we ran halfway across the world, now we got to run back and meet up with this guy. And it's just never fun. Um, now I, uh, I will say that the, 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 the worlds that they build are cool and I'll give, I'll give props to, uh, Star Wars, the old Republic, because they've, they've made great strides towards a, a, a good single player experience. Um, and then Star Trek online, it can be pretty fun. And then of course, Eve online is whatever that game is, is dictated by the players. So I'll, mm-hmm. I'll give props there, but I still never have that pure experience that I want. So when, when we get it, you know, after we do the news and we start talking about tenacity, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear your, your feedback on, you know, what, what's different. How are you going to try to, you know, approach things differently? And before people like, what the heck is Shane talking about? Man, I've been playing, I played Ultima online. I played EverQuest. I played EverQuest two. I played Asheron's call. I mean, I've played them all is what I'm saying, you know, and, and I've a DC universe, uh, you know, uh, if they're out there, I've probably at least tried it for the most part. So, I mean, I, I have a somewhat, you know, I'm not just throwing that opinion out there, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, because a lot of people are like, what's he talking about? Of course you can have fun on an MMO. Uh, but you know, everybody's different. Okay. I got, I got to do this real quick. Uh, Matt, if, if I don't banter with Zach, my producer, then what happens is the head of my news team, Sal, his grandmother and her dog Muffin get mad at me. All right. And I get, I get nasty emails and I get nasty grams. This, this past week, uh, Zach, this past week, I got a postcard from, from Sal's grandmother and her dog Muffin. Mm-hmm. And you know how there's a four star rating? <laughs> yes. They gave me one edge of one spoke of a star for last week. So the week before I got nothing, which I said felt ominous, yeah. right? Because I didn't get to banter with you. Right. So this is, this is how shaky the ground is <laughs> with Sal's grandmother and, and her dog muffin. All right. So let's banter, Zach. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's banter like there's no tomorrow. Okay. Wrinkle in time. Are you going to go see Wrinkle in time? I will not. You're not? I'm not. I've well, seen the, I've seen the trailer for it, but yeah. it just doesn't catch my eye. It's not doing anything for you? No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you this, Wrinkle in Time. And, and Matt, are you are you a Wrinkle in Time guy at all? Uh, no. No, okay. <laughs> I probably so, won't see it either. Yeah, well, I'm doomed. <laughs> so there goes the banter this week. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm just signing off. Shame stacks. It's been nice. Uh, Muffin, well, I'm going to try to pull this out, okay? So Wrinkle in Time mm-hmm. was one of my favorite books when I was a kid. It was okay. actually a series of books, but I, I don't think I ever read the other ones, but uh, the first one, it, you know, when I was growing up in the 80s or whatever, uh, a lot of people read this book. Yeah. And it's a beloved, in quotes, book, right? And here's my thing. The, the movie, I have no idea. For whatever reason, I, I guess because there's so many other crazy movies coming out right now, it, it hasn't really grabbed a lot of my attention. Right. I'll definitely watch it on video. Okay. But Matt and and Zach and Sal's grandmother... And your dog Muffin, and for everybody else listening, here's a little bit of trivia, a little geek trivia for you. That was the book that introduced the term Tesseract to me. Okay, because that's what a wrinkle in time is. They're explaining, they're like, they go, how do we get from here to here? Mm -hmm. And if I remember right, somebody takes a piece of paper and they draw like a dot or an X on one side, and then they draw like a dot or an X on the other, and then they fold the paper and bring the two points together. Right. And like we can go, we can get from here to here immediately. So you wrinkle time and you can kind of teleport, right? Mm-hmm. And they said that's if a te- only. If only. And they said that's what a Tesseract is. So when Josh Whedon's Marvel's Avengers movie came out and they called the Cosmic Cube a Tesseract, <laughs> I jumped up and cried foul. <laughs> I said, I object, Your Honor. So I just want you, I said, I object. That's a Cosmic Cube. But I guess Cosmic Cube sounded too dumb, so they had to come up with some other name for it. A Tesseract. Well, have you seen the reviews for? Uh, I have not. No, okay. I have not. Not uh, so good. They're so not far. so good. No. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the story is the book was fun. Okay. You know, so people are book readers. It, like I said, it's one of those beloved fantasy sci fi books or whatever. And the, the conceit is I think it's, if I remember right, it's been years. Some kids, I think it's three girls, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure. I know there's a couple of girls. Uh, there's like two or three kids and they're trying to find their dad. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, and they go on this cosmic, metaphysical, fantastical adventure. But a tesseract is a wrinkle in time. It's a fold in space, people. It's not a <laughs> cosmic cube that has an infinity stone in it. 
Okay, that's all I want to say. Although I'm really looking forward to Infinity War, and I love all the Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. And Black Panther is still destroying the box office. You know, that's great, right? Yes, it is. I love Black Panther. It's incredible, Mm -hmm. actually. Yeah. Have you, Matt, have you seen Black Panther? Uh, No, I haven't, but I plan on watching it as soon as it comes out. I'm not really a movie theater kind of guy. There's people like that. I don't like being in a crowded room with folks. Okay. Well, they got these newer, and in fact, they've got one here, like Movie Tavern, and mm-hmm. they got the Austin Draft House, where it's more like a going out to eat and you right. can see watching. But it, but but anyway, I, I dig that. There's some people who don't like to go out to the movies. So I have, a, right. very, I have a very nice home theater. I'd rather just sit at home with the wife. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Don't blame you. Nothing wrong with that. I will say, I think you'll enjoy Black Panther. It was it was a very good movie. Um, very good. So okay, and now speaking of Sal. Uh, Zach, let's turn on the super secret microphone in the newsroom and see what they're up to today. Oh, there they go. Working on Saturday, working hard. Folks, remember, for every dollar of uh, Patreon support uh, that the show gets, uh, the news team gets a penny an hour raise. I mean, that that is a win-win right there. So I'm going to plow through some uh, some uh, game news here real quick. I, I, I've, I, I try to make the game or the news segment topical kind of to the to the guest. So I'm gonna I'm gonna plow through these pretty quick, uh, but but Matt, feel free to to chime in on any of these news items. I like it when my guests do that. So and then and, and Zach, of course, you can as well. Now for folk uh, for fans of Neverwinter Nights, uh, the original Neverwinter Nights, uh, the uh, Beam Dog shared on Twitter, and Beam Dog is the ones that you know they've they've done the enhanced editions of Baldur's Gate and. Uh, they did Sage of Dragon Spear and, and all this other stuff. Anyway, they announced that the Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition is coming to Steam on March 27th. So if you're a Neverwinter Nights fan, which was the, that was BioWare's, it was sort of like Baldur's Gate, but with a 3D engine. And, and it and it had a lot of focus on, uh, it was just you and one other companion at the same time. And you got a lot more companion Yeah, stuff. I'm really excited about it. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to hold off on it for a little while as I'm currently playing the Tomb of Annihilation campaign with my D&D group. And I'm worried about spoilers as that was the last addition to it. Ah, so wait a minute. So this Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition is going to have the Tomb of well, Annihilation? Well, I believe, I believe Neverwinter Nights, the last addition to it was Tomb of Annihilation. Oh. So I've just, I've stayed clear of it as as much as possible because I'm really into the tabletop campaign okay. right now. And I, I don't want to run into any spoilers, but nice. as soon as that's over with, I'm definitely going to be checking that out. Hey, Shane here with a footnote on the podcast version of the show. When we were talking during the live show about Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition and Matt brought up the uh, Tomb of Annihilation expansion, who's actually referring to the Neverwinter Online MMO and not the upcoming Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition from Beamdog. So I got with him later and said, hey, and he goes, oh yeah, I got that mixed up. And I said, hey, do you want me to delete that out? And he goes, nah, man, just just leave that in because he's cool like that. So on with the show. Yeah, I'm running Tomb of Annihilation next. I'm, I'm running uh, Out of the Abyss with my tabletop uh, party g- uh, group. Uh, but Tome of Annihilation, any any game that has zombie tyrani- or, or Tyrannosaurus Rexes that that vomit <laughs> zombies out of its mouth at you. And it also yes. has dinosaur racing. So, yeah, it's unless something really st- <coughs> strange happens, pardon me, that's going to be the next campaign I run. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so I'm, I'm curious. Neverwinter Nights was also now it's Neverwinter Nights has a long history. It was an AOL game that was in that old SSI gold box oh, yeah. style. Then it. Then Bioware made that 3D version, um, and it had Dungeon Master tools in it. So I'm I'm curious to see what uh, what Bioware's or Beam Dog is going to do with it. And I may I may reach you out and try to have them on the show. So here's another weird little piece of news. And Matt, I already know you're up to speed on this because we were talking about it in the chat room on or in the message group on Facebook this morning. Our our friend Matt Barton from Matt Chat uh, shared with us that uh, Ultima Dev and and Shroud of the Avatar and all that. Richard Garriott, Lord British himself, his house was broken into. I don't know if it was yesterday or this morning or whatever. Uh, and I, I don't have any further news on this yet. I'm just going by what Matt reported. I guess Richard Garriott posted this on his Facebook page. And yeah, he, it seems the uh, it seems the thief failed his stealth check. He did fail his stealth check. And then and then what what resetting MMO ability did Richard Garriott unleash upon the thief? It was a prime primal scream. It was a right? primal scream. Yeah, he yelled at the thief <laughs> or thieves and chased them off. So uh, I don't have any more news on that right now. It's just something he shared on his, his Facebook page. I, all joking aside, 
I'm glad it, that it appears that Richard Gary yeah, and his family are okay. Yeah, family are safe. Yeah, because, I mean, it's it's only amusing because we know, you know, we can look back in hindsight and say, you know, he unleashed a primal scream. So, and as Matt Barton was saying, he's like, well, it's like, what do I do? I've got a halberd here. I've got a, you know, I've got a mace. I've got a cross. What what weapon do I, as Lord Gary or Lord British, use to uh, defend my castle? So, and yeah. I found another interesting piece of news on Lord British. He has this big estate, I think, on Lake Austin or in the Austin area. And when I was looking for news on this, which I couldn't find, evidently he he is he's selling his estate for forty five million dollars. And last month he said, if anyone wants to buy the whole thing in Bitcoin, he'll give them a significant discount. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and I'm gonna, you know, again, I'm gonna have a show pretty soon on um, on Bitcoin. So uh, or on cryptocurrency and you know all all this stuff in all this stuff in general. So. Um, all right, moving right along. Are uh, as a developer, um, I, 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 not as a player. Uh, although I know that you know you're you're a geek and you play games and stuff, Matt. As a developer, what 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 are your thoughts? What what are your reactions with these numbers that Fortnite Battle Royale and uh, Publisher Unknown's Battlegrounds are posting for concurrent players? You know, I actually have some history with uh, Player Unknown. I was I originally cut my teeth as an Arma dev, oh. um, making mods for Arma alongside him. So I I literally watched his community grow. Wow, uh, uh, to where it is today, and it's incredible to me to know that that guy started doing the same thing I did, and it's kind of an inspiration for me actually. Wow. I've even spoke I've spoken to him in chats a couple times before when his community was smaller. Um the Battle Royale was originally just an Arma mod and then he said, "Well, why don't I take this and go the full 9 with it?" And I I I would take a guess that once Epic saw the popularity of it, they decided to roll their own variation of it and together they've created almost a whole new genre from thin air. Right. So, um basically if if people don't know uh Publisher Unknown Battlegrounds released this uh, game. Oh, it's Publisher Unknown, but the game, I guess, is called Battlegrounds. And it, it you drop, it's a hundred player deathmatch, I think, where you get, you parachute down onto an island. And then it's this sort of Hunger game style battle. Who'll be the last person standing? And the, the playable area keeps shrinking. Uh, and, and it, so it forces you to interact and fight. Uh, and it's massive popularity. Uh, you know, millions of concurrent, not just people playing the game, but concurrent. They keep out Fortnite Battle Royale and then, uh, Publisher Unknown Battlegrounds keep outdoing each other with higher and higher records of concurrent players. And as recently as a month ago, uh, you know, Fortnite, uh, Battle Royale passed Publisher Unknown Battleground with 3. Million, pre 3.4 million people playing at the same time. Um, and then of course, uh, Fortnite released their battle, uh, or their battle royale. I, I don't know mod uh, version of the game or whatever, and mm -hmm. and you know so they just keep going back and forth. And from what I understand, publish Battlegrounds is more of a serious theme game, where battle oh, de royale. Oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's much more for like the 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 person who enjoys the serious uh, style of first person right. shooter where. Uh, Fortnite is much more of an arcadey, like casual, like they they don't take themselves seriously. Right, they're just having fun, and uh, exactly, yeah, and and so, uh, you know, they're different flavor games. They're both doing ridiculously well, uh, and then evidently, the, the both of these games came out of a like a, a a Japanese movie from like ten or fifteen years ago, I think, called Battle Royale, where yep. uh, yep. yeah, the 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 where. It was kind of like a Hunger Games style thing where just all these kids were killing each other. Uh, yeah, the and, difference between that and the modern take on it is it was it was they were much younger in that. I, I believe like they were 11, 12 year olds, whereas in Hunger Games and yeah, they modern were at least tweens and history, teenagers, at least, at yeah. least teens. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but anyway, so it's it's kind of interesting as a as a game dev, uh, Matt. I you know main question I have for you for here is okay, three point four million concurrent players for the foreseeable future, right? Let's call it 10 to 20 years. Let's call it 10 years. Have we hit 
have we hit the upper, upper limit or have they just set what the baseline is going to be and it's just going to keep going up and up for concurrent oh, players? I, I don't think it's the upper limit yet. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to keep growing for a while before it finally begins to slow down. I think it's going to take some, something as new to capitalize, you know, on the world's interest that way. Right. I mean, that's not just, you know, that's not United States. That's worldwide. Right. There's people from all over the world joining in to have fun on the same platform. It's incredible. It is. And I can't even imagine the server and the database and the network requirements to support something like that. I just, wow. You got, yeah, that, that's mean, my day job is I yeah. build networks and I, I can, I just daydream the, the infrastructure that those guys have. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in it information services, whatever. I don't deal directly with networks, but I know enough to know that that's no small feat to make that kind of thing work, you know, reliably with, you know, what's, what's the standard 99.9% uptime. Um, oh yeah, 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 and I. It's always it's kind of the the crux of your release is how you handle the massive influx of players on day one. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You always see these big anticipated games have problems on day one. Uh, Almost e- always. Yeah. Even games with such pedigree as like SimCity that that you know they had a big problem um, a few years ago. So anyway, okay. One more news story. Then we're gonna hit a break and we come back. We're gonna talk with Matt about his game development and tenacity online. This, you know, I specifically picked this new story for you, Matt, as an indie game dev. Have you seen, uh, oh, and by the way, if people go to the, uh, the show notes version or, or the, if you're, if you go to the show notes of today's show and you're listening by podcast or Krypton radio, the Fortnite passes PUBG with 3.4 million concurrent players story is from PC gamer. And I, and what I'm about to talk about, I came, I, I, uh, became aware of by a post on, uh, Kotaku. I guess I'm saying that right. I never say it out loud. Kotaku. I think it's Kotaku. Kotaku. So it's on Kotaku and it says Steam user develops his own way to find new games. Now, have you seen this stop the Steam top 250 game uh, site, Matthew? I have. And I've seen uh, I've seen other variations of it, too. Like there's one out there that will show you only games that have never been downloaded. There you go. So the, the, the concept here is Steam is both a game developer's best friend and worst nightmare because it gets your game out there, but there's so many games on Steam now that can be really hard to find the good stuff. Uh, so what what Steam 250 does is is they uh, they have various, and it's weighted. It's, he's got some sort of algorithm, I guess, to make it more fair or something like that. But you can look at top 250 games, top 250 DLC, bestsellers, hidden gems, uh platform most played bottom 100 you can go by price you can go by tags so the genre of the game uh you can go by the period i mean all this stuff so if you're the point is if you go to steam250.com and i and i want people to know be, to be aware of these sites for game devs like matt and others that i've had on the show and that are just out there if you use sites like these you've got a better chance of finding something in my opinion that might scratch your itch that you wouldn't find just by browsing steam so yeah uh, exactly yeah and he you know and he, he also factors in reviews in a rated wide way and that kind of thing so so as an indie game dev i mean are you personally happy matt that sites like this are out there actually actually very much uh with their recent changes of getting rid of steam green light there was a lot of turmoil in the indie games i've seen considering we relied so heavily on steam's platform because right. there really isn't another viable option so when they when they told us, you know, you're no longer going to be allowed in based on votes, it's just pay to enter and an algorithm is going to take care of everything. It's kind of a far fetched thing to say. Right. Like an AI can't tell me exactly what I'm looking for. It right. can help me find it with the proper input, but they don't right. even ask you for input. They just they just decide. Yeah. So I, this is I, I think this is good. You know, when I saw this, I was like, this is good because there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of heart, a lot of passion and shelf space for your game is tight, folks. I mean, it's tight, you know. Oh, you, yeah. I've seen I've yeah. seen a team. Um, they made a platform, and it was a nice platformer. It was well-made, well-polished. And I think he got like 50 downloads or something like that on Steam. And I, it may have changed since then, but right. the guy spent a good two years of his life, right. all of his spare time making it. And it was just sad because it was a good game. If people would have just seen it, they probably right. would have played it. Right. Exactly. So uh, that that – exactly. That's why I wanted to highlight this because, you know, you put your blood, sweat, and tears. In his, and if you make a good game – or if you make a bad game, that's on you. But it, at least give people a chance to know about the game. So, you you know, not just, well, exactly. it was it got highlighted for an hour and then went away. 
you know, kind of thing. So uh, it's actually, uh, I believe it's 24 hours when you release on Steam, you get 24 hours of heightened exposure. And then that 24 hours is, is your make I or mean, break. this is a yep. grain of salt. But it's make it or break it. If you don't yeah. do well in that 24 hours, you're going to stop being visible. Exactly. That's that's why I love this Steam 250 kind of stuff. Okay, we're going to get to a break here on Shane Plays Geek Talk. Brief, brief break for a word from our sponsors. When we come back, we're going to talk with Matt Weymouth of Brain Sandwich Games about indie game dev and his MMO for the role player called Tenacity Online right here on Shane Plays Geek Talk. comic book lovers visit the wildstars.com today from the mind of author and comic book industry expert michael tierney it's not just a comic book it's a comic book novel the wild stars is sci-fi and so much more learn the explanations behind ufos and space gods this isn't the twilight zone this is the region of the milky way galaxy known as the wild stars we guarantee you've never read anything like it the complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell with one reviewer noting the story of the wild stars stretches ambitiously across space and time from small town murders to the destruction of planets with every event given multiple layers of meaning if you haven't read the wild stars you're missing out visit the wildstars.com today the die is cast plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory all this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays hey we're back on shame plays geek talk i'm your host shane stacks thanks so much for joining us whether you're listening live on Saturday, March 10th uh, on 96.5 FM, The Answer, or at the live stream at 96.5 FM, The Answer dot com. Or if you're listening by podcast or on Krypton Radio, just so glad you're here. I'm talking with Matt Weymouth of Brain Sandwich Games. He's been in the indie game dev trenches for a few years now, and, and his, his labor of love is Tenacity Online, which is the MMORPG for the role player. So I'm very, very curious to learn more about this uh you know if you uh if you're listening live and you're just joining us make sure to check out the podcast version because the news segment was really good we run, went into some really good stuff for uh for games and indie game dev now so so matt thanks again for joining us um, and thank you for having me yeah you're welcome folks remember this is live on saturday so you can if you're listening live you can call in at 501 Eight two three zero nine six five, or you can tweet me at Shane Plays. So I've got uh, Matt. I've got the official Pat pending Shane Plays icebreaker question for you today. Since the okay. quote unquote official part of the interview is starting, what's your earliest memory? My earliest memory. Yes. Um. Actually, it's a funny one. Okay. Uh, me and my dad were riding in a car, and we pull up to a four way stop sign. Uh, three other people pull up on each individual stop and my dad's it was the first one there and he let everyone go and i looked at him and said dad why did you let everyone go and he said because there's enough jerks in the world oh, and that is, that is probably one. my earliest uh like lesson life lesson that i can remember that is great. just don't be a jerk don't be a jerk <laughs> yeah yeah there's also some actually there's some game theory involved in what he just did um so if uh if there's a great scene uh, that movie with Russell Crowe where he's um like the mathematician. Anyway, they use a they use a uh an analogy that this incredibly hot woman in a red 
dress walks into the bar. And if every guy in the, in the bar fights over her, nobody's probably going to end up having a good night. But if they all ignore her and talk to the other nice women in the bar, then everybody wins that night. So it's not exactly the same thing, but kind of, right? It's just right, like, right. yeah, yeah. So a little bit of game theory. In the, but that's a fantastic. Life's easier when you're just nice. Yeah, when you're just nice. You don't have to, yeah. Yeah, so uh, fantastic. That's that's a great first memory. Good on you and your dad. So, all right. Tell us a little bit, uh, you know, a, a brief summary of what what is your history with, with indie game dev i know that tenacity online is not your first game that you've well as with. most ga- indie game devs will tell you um the fastest way to success is to fail <laughs> so you I've, I've had several projects that you know they 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 fail you to flight like i designed it got got lots of art made got plenty of levels made and then it just didn't take off so the next thing you do is you dust yourself off and you try again and rinse and repeat that for that process for about five years now, maybe six at this point. Uh, three years into development on Tenacity. Wow. And this is where I'm at. <laughs> oh, wow. So now I've got, uh, I, I cannot encourage people enough. I'm going to post this link on the, on the show notes. I'll probably tweet it out again. I tweet it out every now and then. There is an article out there from Engadget called The Only Video Game Developer in Mississippi. And it talks about Matt. And what he's doing with his games, but also talks about he's trying to create an incubator in Mississippi to bring developers and musicians and artists together to make games. Now, this was written roughly a year and a half ago. So, you know, I'm curious for what 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 has happened with that, if anything, because I know you actually admit, yeah. the state of Mississippi itself reached out to me nice. after that article was posted. And um, they we've worked, uh, you know, there's there's. There's deals in the works with the state themselves trying to get funding for something similar to this. Nice. And there, since then, there's been a few people to do it in northern Mississippi. Okay. Uh, on the coast of Mississippi is where I'm from. And now you're it, Gulf, you're Gulfport area, right? Yes. 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 I spent and, some time in Biloxi. Uh, oh yeah. In, in the Air Force, it's a nice yeah, place. I was, <laughs> was at Keesler. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. When I was there, there was bumper stickers that said "Clean up the streets of Biloxi." Hit an airman. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I will say I enjoyed I enjoyed the Biloxi Gulfport area very much. I had a good time there. So, yeah, um, yeah. The one problem with that area is if you are in the tech industry. Yeah. Now, there are people who will argue me till they're blue in the face that it's not as hard as I say it is. But it's it's incredibly hard to find if stable income working for tech there because the jobs that are there are, are filled. Well, you called and- it a dead zone in the article. You were yeah, it was, it was, it feels that way. Like yeah. that's a, that's another uh, little bit of hyperbole there. It's a, yeah. uh, it feels like a dead zone. It feels like no matter how hard you reach out to find people, you just can't find anyone. Okay. And after that, after that article aired, me and uh, a buddy had started a Mississippi game dev group and it was alive for a year and not one single person joined. Yeah, that's crazy. And yeah. then after that article, uh, we we went up severely in members. I think it's at like 35, 40 now. Fantastic. Just because everybody saw the article and was like, oh, I feel the same way. So they jumped into the group with us. All right. And so, no, go ahead. after that, quite a bit has started happening. All right. So I have to ask you this, and, and, I, and I can't spend any more time on it because I want to talk about tenacity. How did this article happen? Like, how did she, how did the... Uh, she posted on Twitter, and I had been following her for a while. Jessica, I'd been following her for a while because she writes yeah, relative Jessica, articles. To Jessica me. Condit. So yes, yeah. yes, and she posted, uh, "I'm stuck for a news article. Anybody got anything?" I was like, "Well, how about the only game dev in Mississippi?" And that's one thing led to another, and there we are. Okay, well, I, you know, we could literally, you know, do a whole show on on that concept. Uh, yes, but uh, you know, keep me updated. I'm fascinated in that. So uh, you're one of those type of people. Look around, and say. You know, there's two types of people in the world, right? There's one type mm-hmm. of person will look around and say, well, there's nothing happening. And well, I'm stuck then. And there's the other kind of person that looks around and says, there's nothing happening. I'm going to make something happen. And so, mm-hmm. so good on you. It's like the, it's like the old joke. Uh, there, there's a, a shoe salesman that goes to some remote place that, and he shows up and nobody wears shoes. So he calls this company and says, I'm coming home because nobody wears shoes. And then a salesman from another company shows up, sees that nobody wears shoes, and he calls his company and says, send me every shoe you got. Nobody here has any shoes. So, exactly. uh, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just a different mindset. But 
But anyway, okay, so let's move forward. I want to uh, I want to spend the rest of the show talking about tenacity online. What uh, you know? What why why tenacity online? Why is this where you're putting your energy? Uh, it's always been a dream of mine. Yeah. So it is it is kind of chasing the dream. Um, I've played. I'm similar to you. I've played. If there's an MMO out there and they had a free trial, I played it. <laughs> right. And if I liked it, I subbed and played it for longer. Um, I started, I want to say my first MMO was actually Dark Ages of Camelot. Yeah, that's and one that it, I didn't play. And then play. it was EverQuest. Yeah, that's one I didn't play, but a lot of people play Dark Age. People still play Dark Age of Camelot. But Oh, yeah, there's still yeah. live servers today. The game I probably played the longest as an MMO was um, Lord of the Rings Online. And that was because that's, that's a good one. I have friends that play it, and we have a mutual acquaintance. I don't know if he, he talks in the group sometimes named Johnny Wood. And he works, uh, he was at Turbine, but now he's whatever company spilled off, sp- uh, spend off to do Lord of the Rings online. So, uh, yeah. yeah, so it, you could, you can run around and play with him. He's like, yeah, I developed that. Yep. Oh, yep. I did that. So that, that's, it's kind of fun to run around with Johnny. Uh, but it's even then it's been two or three years since I played that. I get into MMOs, but then they never keep me over time. Or if I do that free trial, like I said, I'm usually getting drug all over the place. Do this, do that. Do, 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 do. And it's like it's like I'm eating a a quarter pounder instead of a steak that I've been promised. Right. So. Right. Uh, right. So, all right. So tell us, how is tenacity going to avoid those those issues for people like me that, that don't like that style? Well, there's there's a game dev theory out there called Bartle's Taxonomy. OK. And it, the theory is, is that there's four different game type game players, archetype of players. OK. And you fall somewhere in between that archetype. So as I've developed the game and I build these systems, I keep that in mind that if I'm building a PvP match, then people who are, are playing that aren't necessarily there for the sheer PvP match. Maybe they're there just to explore the map and see what it looks like. Right. Maybe they're there to get that little piece of lore that's involved in it. Uh, you have to keep everyone in, in mind. And a lot of the times these games, when you get into it, you'll you'll get lost and, and it feels like you're just being drug around by a leash. Uh, Instead right, of yeah. enjoying the game and exploring the game, you're right. being hand-fed the game and sometimes by fist. Right. You know, really, I uh, the the best MMO moment I've ever had, and this is probably just because I was new to MMOs. I was playing EverQuest. I picked it up. I didn't know anybody else who was playing it, and I was in the you know because EverQuest was like you know your first four or five levels, you were in whatever the newbie garden is, what killing bats or whatever. I mean, right. that was EverQuest. And I was in Freeport, and I think I was at the East Gate of Freeport or something, and I was killing stuff. I was like level two or something. And, you know, off in the distance, the horizon was kind of foggy. That's how they handled, you know, the, the, the maximum distance on, you know, what your polygons, your computer could build or whatever. And these four or five players came running out of the mist and they went running into Freeport. And I was like, I, I can't wait to get out there and see what they're doing. Right. It was just, I mean, it's seared into my brain, you know, and, and it was just this great moment. Uh, and, if if I could yeah. pick any MMO moment that yeah. I tried to recapture that lightning in a bottle yeah. would be from EverQuest, and yeah. I played on release. So when when the game released, everybody picked their class, their character, and their class. Right. Well, dwarves started in the dwarf hometown. Humans started in the mm-hmm. human hometown. Right. So we set out a few hours into server time, and it's just me and my three dwarf buddies. We're all playing together. Right. And we see a troll player walk up. And we're like, oh, my gosh, it's a yeah. troll and he's yeah. a player. Well, we couldn't communicate with each other because we didn't speak the same language. Right. So you're stuck with the option of do you attack him? Do you run from him? Do right. you try to communicate? Well, we decided to try to communicate. So the first few hours of gameplay in EverQuest, we all sat around a campfire and talked to each other to learn each other's languages. That's crazy. Yeah. See, that was an EverQuest. I want to recapture that spirit and make it to where like things just way outside of the norm. Instead right. of getting on an MMO and just doing a dungeon run, right. I want it to be an adventure that you're going to remember and talk about the next day. Right. And that's uh, that's what our mutual friend David Beatty's trying to do in Mega Wars is that kind of emergent crazy stuff that happens in Mega Wars, uh, the mm-hmm. human element. But the uh, I guess with EverQuest, and I don't want people to think I I love to beat down a bad guy as much as the next person. Don't get me wrong. Exactly. Uh, but I like a blend. You know, I don't want it to be just, you know, that's all I'm doing is I'm just grinding or this or that. I mean, one of my favorite, second favorite moment in EverQuest is I was in uh, Castle Crushbone and and I did a, I dashed through the throne room 
somebody was like, ah, oh, there's like a vest up here. If you want it, you know, we just killed so-and-so. And I did this massive run through, uh, through Crushbone and all this stuff was chasing me. And I went up to the throne room, grabbed whatever it was, jumped out the window, landed. And then I was like, train to zone, <laughs> trained. And I mean, I just, <laughs> boom, right. And I made it, you know, it was exhilarating. It was a lot of fun, but so I, I like the crazy combat stuff too. Don't get me wrong. Um, mm-hmm. but so, so you, you literally it has think, to be, it has to be memorable. Like yeah. it has to actually leave an impression on you instead right. of just being the same 10 button mash over and over. You right. Know? Exactly. And the games now, you know, I'm sounding like, I mean, they do the, the, the harder the game is to figure out or, or like when you have to figure out the game on your own, I think there's much more of an engagement in it. Right. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I mentally engage with EverQuest probably more than any other game because you, what am I doing? I, I don't know what to do here. What, what am I doing? And you had to fumble around and, and figure it out. Uh, you know, where the newer games, because they want to have mass appeal. I mean, they basically do everything for you in a certain press this, do that, do that, do that. Um, I have no, I have no disillusions with yeah. that. This is going to be a very niche market game. Right. I, I'm not I'm not trying to take over World of Warcraft numbers. I just don't see that as feasible or realistic for a small team of people to try and compete with that. Right. But I do I do want to create something that a as a game dev I can be proud about. Right. And b as something as a player I can enjoy myself. So uh, that's what I constantly keep in mind when I'm designing new new ideas and such. Like for instance, when when something new gets added to a game that's as popular as like MM like World of Warcraft right. or something similar, it, it's already beat before the content's released. Right. It's already been data mined to to heck and back. Right. Uh, the, the, there's already walkthroughs on it. There's solutions already written out. Right. I, when I add something to tenacity, I plan on just maybe quietly like a little blurp about it. Right. That maybe there's the new the new tunnel opened up somewhere or something like that, and then let the players go and explore it. Yeah, I mean, I can, it, yeah, go ahead. Instead of doing a whole write up or a yeah. walkthrough and then releasing it after the fact, I would much rather the players just enjoy Figure it. it out. And, uh, yeah. I'm totally okay with nothing ever being found. Hey, Shane here with another footnote for the podcast version. One thing that uh, Matt mentioned to me offline after the uh, live show was that uh, he wanted to mention and forgot that Tenacity Online will have GMs, as in Game Masters, and they will be able to change things in the game real time for players, much like a Game Master would, you know, at a traditional tabletop role-playing game. So in addition to the other, you know, sort of role-playing emphasis, and, and eventually he wants every character in the game to be represented by a real player, there's also that dynamic. And now back to the show. <laughs> yeah, well, that's kind of where, like, EverQuest at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. I literally remember going, what do I do with this thing I just got? And I remember getting responses on the Mass World Chat. They're like, well, we know the first three steps, but we don't know what's supposed to happen after that. People are still trying to figure it out. And I was like, ooh, that's cool. You know, it came and kind of gave me little tingles. But anyway, okay, I got to get us to a break. When we come back, uh, you know, I'd like to uh, get it kind of an up. Like, when when do you see, like, people being able to jump in? Or what? where are you at in your development? And, and like, you know, that that kind of thing. Uh, and maybe for the game devs out there, you know, what what technolo- technology you're working in. But but hold, hold your powder on that for a second, Matt. I got to get us to a break so we can... We can pay the bills here with our sponsors. Some goblins are your friends. Game Goblins is Central Arkansas's premier retailer, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. Conveniently located at 1121 South Bowman, right on the corner of Bowman and Canis in West Little Rock, and staffed by friendly employees, I heartily recommend Game Goblins for all your gaming needs. Make sure to check out their customer loyalty program that rewards you based on your actual purchases. First time customers mention Shane plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. Tell them Shane plays sent you. Hey, welcome back to Shane plays geek talk. I'm Shane stacks, your host, and we are joined by Matt Weymouth of brain. Hello. Hey, Matt of brain sandwich games. And we're talking about his, uh, He's an indie game dev and, and he's working on an online MMO. Well, I guess that's redundant. It's MMO RPG for the role player called Tenacity Online. So, uh, Matt, I, I want to ask you real quick, like when, where are you at in your development cycle on, on this game? I guess in a technical sense, you'd call it a pre alpha. Okay. Um, I, I've built it in a way that most of the core systems are there. So as far as like server side, um, database, that sort of thing. It's all functioning. I'm at the point now where I have to start fleshing it out. I have to actually build the skill tree out. The skill tree's core mechanics are there. I just need to fill it out now. 
the worlds like I need to generate the the the, the continent itself. Right. Um, my first zone that's already live and can be entered by players is I think it was twelve kilometers square, okay. and that's the first zone. Wow. Um, yeah, and I'm using procedural terrain generation to generate it. I have some some uh, uh, an overworld map that I've made, and I'm sectioning out each part of the map, and then using procedural terrain generation to create the zones. Okay. And, and then after that, I will use instance based dungeons to allow people to you know feel the dungeon for themselves without being overcrowded. Okay. And uh, you know I have I have systems such as. Uh, um, player owned, um, property territory, if you will. So like kingdoms, towns, even all the way down to just owning a house. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have a unique skill system where most of the skills can be gained through what you would think of as a normal way. I, I spend my skill points, but there are going to be some spells and such in the game that you'll have to actually complete a long quest chain in order to gain it oh, interesting. or okay. find a secret, this to unlock uh, a spell X basically. Uh, that way, when you see the guy use the spell, you'll know, oh, wow, that guy actually found out where the secret of blah, blah, blah is. Oh, yeah, right. You know, right. So yeah. it, what, uh, another strong influence on the design is uh, Star Wars Galaxies, uh-huh. the original Star Wars MMO. Uh-huh. And one of my favorite things about that was seeing somebody who was walking by and suddenly a bounty hunter shows up and the Jedi puts his robe on and pulls his lightsaber right. out. Yeah, and you realize, whoa, that's actually a Jedi. <laughs> well, I remember from Star Wars, it was a big news item from Star Wars Galaxy when the I think one or two players became Jedi at the same time, and the main in-game reaction was like every bounty hunter in the game was now looking for them. So it was, it was yeah, pretty, yeah, it was pretty and, crazy, and it was cool because the bounty hunter couldn't tell you were a Jedi unless you used some sort of force power, right? So you're wandering around in your normal adventuring gear. And it was just so cool to me to see a guy throw his robes on and pull his lightsabers right. out and realize, wow, he's actually put quite a bit of effort in. <laughs> yeah, that's really neat. So what what is the uh, what technology are you developing this game? Uh, I'm using Unity. Um, okay. There's there's quite a few assets. The like the procedural terrain generation is um, what, what is it? Map Magic is what I'm using there. Okay. Um, there's a, there's a full featured weather system that I'm using. Okay. Uh, procedurally generated clouds. Even as far as latitude and longitude uh, is real world. The time is real world. Uh, you can so say you go out and you look up and you're at the latitude and longitude where you live right now. In in game, if you were to find that same latitude and longitude and look up, you will see the same stars. Oh, no, nice. that's cool. So, all right, yeah. Uh, as far as we get, we just got two or three minutes left here. Uh, is the best way to keep up with the development on this tenacityonline.com dot com or how it, how, it, how do you recommend? It, yeah, yeah, tenacityonline.com dot com and then join our community. I, everything I add, I, I usually do a forum post about it. Okay. Uh, it's it's been kind of quiet in there because this is really the first foray into public speaking about it. Right. So if you get there and it seems kind of empty, that's because we we're just beginning. Okay. And when you say the 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 community, you you literally mean the forums that are at Tenacity yeah, Online. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I do have a Facebook page too. It's uh, a okay. Tenacity MMO is okay. the name of the group. Okay. Um. So I, if if you prefer like Facebook and you don't you're not really into the forum scene, you can follow there too. I post the same thing in both. All right. Well, are you looking for devs and or beta testers? What like where you know what are you looking? I'm for? always I'm always interested in anybody who is self driven and would like to join the team. Um, it's all funded out of pocket, so I haven't I, I don't I don't believe in not paying people for their work. Okay. Unless they're volunteering it, so I don't a- actively search out anybody to help me because I don't have the funding to pay right. them a right. full time job. Right. But if anyone out there is willing and and interested, I'm I'm uh, open ears. Well, excellent. Okay, so that's tenacityonline.com. Real quick, is it, what is the fantasy setting? Is it traditional Tolkien or? And we've only it, got about thirty it's, seconds on this. It's hot. It's high. It's high. Fo- it's high fantasy, fantasy. Traditional token. Well, I love high fantasy, and I love the idea of an MMO for the role player. When when you need beta testers, when you need people to come in and create characters and fumble around, I would I would love to be one of those people. So um, okay, yeah, I'll w- keep you in mind. Um, it's actually already up and running, and yeah. all I have to do is create an account, and people can check out the work as they go, as I go. Oh, so, so so are you looking for that kind of player right now? Is that and, is that something? One- no, it's it's. I'm not actively looking for okay. it, but if anyone is interested, they can join. I, I have no qualms with showing people my work as it goes. Okay, well, excellent. Uh, well, uh, 
Matt, keep me updated, and you know maybe we'll do do a show once you launch, and you know people are playing and stuff like that. Thanks so much for coming on. Radio goes so quick, we're already done. <laughs> but thank you so much for having me. Yeah, man, I really appreciate it. Remember, folks, it's Tenacity Online, the MMORPG for the role player. Matt, I got to do this to you. It's the, it's the bad joke of the week. Are you ready? Okay. All right. A weasel walks into a bar. What do you have? Asked the bartender. Pop goes the weasel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry to do that to you. You've been a good sport. Thank you've been a great guest, Matt. We'll catch you around. I'll talk to you on Facebook. Everybody else, we'll catch you next week on Shane Plays. Adam Smith needs revision. What are you talking about? If we all go for the blonde. We block each other. Not a single one of us is going to get her. So then we go for her friends. But they will all give us the cold shoulder because nobody likes to be second choice. But what if no one goes for the blonde? We don't get in each other's way. And we don't insult the other girls. That's the only way we win. Adam Smith said the best result comes from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself, right? That's what he said. That's right. Incomplete. Incomplete. Okay? Because the best result would come from everyone in the group doing what's best for himself and the group. Ash, this is some way for you to get the blonde on your own. You can go to hell. Governing this dynamics, gentlemen. Governing dynamics. Adam Smith. He's wrong. Yep, here we go. Careful, careful. Shane Plays Radio is blessed to have sponsors, and we appreciate them very much. However, did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as $1 an episode? Simply go to Patreon.com slash Shane Plays.